Hello folks, um, I'm Carolyn from Tourism Northern Ireland and I'm really delighted to welcome you to the launch of the next wave of our Make It Here careers campaign for tourism and hospitality businesses. We'd also like to update you on, um, on the toolkit um, to help you navigate the activity and to join in. Um, so I'm really, really delighted. Um, as you all know, we're under tight financial constraints at the moment um, and we're challenged. A sort of able to develop and launch another phase of the campaign means that it worked the first time. So success of the initial campaign is purely down to your participation and also the participation of the job seeker. Before I share some of the latest campaign results, I'd like to remind you why we are doing this. So just to remind you of the background and objectives, um, in 2022, we um, undertook robust research involving interviewing a vast range of people. So we interviewed current employees in the sector, um, people who were employing the employees, former employees and students to understand what was really going on across our industry. And you may remember we identified and recognised that there were nuances between those working in hospitality and those working in tourism, which was really important to note. Um, this research has helped us to examine perceptions of the sector and we discovered that three most important aspects of the job for the public were job security, being valued and respected and being able to have a level of respect flexibility with leave. This research allowed us to adopt a two-pronged approach which tackled ex external perceptions but showed there was a need to work with employers to improve the reality from the inside by looking at things such as training, promotion, and ultimately retention. Now, there were negatives coming out of the research, as you'll probably remember. Um, people were saying that uh, they'd missed so many things um, when they'd been working, um, but they also said there weren't always clear pathways of how they could progress through the industry. They were looking for pensions and healthcare, um, overtime with pay, um, and additional holidays. Um, and a lot of the people thought that in fact, 46.1% thought that these aspects would be missing in hospitality and 112 felt the same about working in tourism. So there were many other negatives, such as missing out with friends and family, and there was a perception around pay. Um, there were also things, as, as you would imagine, about um, having low wage um, and just being working weekends, etc., etc. But there were also many positives as well. Um, the main thing that came out through the research that the people working in hospitality and tourism who were enjoying being there loved helping people and having enjoyable experiences. They loved interacting with customers. They loved meeting new people. And also a few of them had come through with very little qualifications, um, which they felt the jobs were more accessible. And also to note that 50% um, of our young people are coming into tourism and hospitality as well for the first time. So the positives were that it gave people work experience for the first time too. So it wasn't all negative, there were, there were some positives. And the, um, the other thing was very emotive about how people just fell into the job and they hadn't planned to go in, but once they worked there, they just really loved it. So there were many positives. So this allowed us, um, this research allowed us to adopt a two-pronged approach, which tackles external perceptions, but demonstrates that there's a need to work with employers as well. So to need to work with you guys to improve the reality from the inside by looking at things such as training, promotion and retention. So it comes again and time and time and again that people in tourism and hospitality industry are actually the same type of people um, and the people who make your day. So the campaign is really all about that. Um, so the strap line remains the same from the last time. Um, some make five star cuisine, others make mouth watering cocktails, some make history come to life and others make sure the books are balanced at the end of the month. But whatever your role and whatever your goal in tourism and hospitality, you can make someone's day here and make your career too. So we, we've kept that in place because that actually um, worked. So I was saying at the start about how um, we were successful in the first phase, um, and this is really demonstrated by the results. Um, so again, we got funding to do it again, and that only is because of these results. So amazingly, we got 30,000 visitors to the site. So there was a microsite, um, a dedicated site with the campaign, and we had 11,000 conversions onto partner recruitment sites. So I'll just show you how that works. But um, so people looking for jobs go in um, into the site, and then they're converted through recruitment partnerships. Um, 
We also reached 71% of the population, which is amazing through our radio. And we had a vast amount of PR as well. Um, and there were thousand unique tourism business opportunities to get involved. Um, we also formed a new Facebook page, which was the first time for us. Um, and as again, I said, we had a campaign microsite. So in terms of the learnings from phase one, um, well, really what happened was there were some good things that we learned because of our demographics. So um, sorry to downtime, but Cool FM outperformed us um, in that in the campaign. We had a Belfast Live partnership, which reached over a million. We had a lot of great um, video content. One of the things that really worked for us was great PR stories. Um, and we really would like more. So um, somebody working in the business who really is enjoying it or has come in from somewhere else is a career changer. Um, any of the stories worked really well. And we had a lot of social interaction going on. Um, it was our biggest driver to the microsite. Um, and so we had um, great engagement from industry. And um, one of the things that we said was, you'd, you'd like us to have more information and more lead time to get involved with the campaign. So we actually have extended the length of the campaign to allow for that. Um, but all of these learnings have um, moved us into phase two. Um, and really, I suppose it's about shouting about the benefits um, of this platform. Um, so it's trying to do two things. It's obviously trying to attract um, applicants to jobs. Um, it's trying to give you an opportunity to reach those applicants, but it's also working really hard to shift perceptions of what it's like to work in the, in the sector um, and to consider um, more people to consider a career. Um, and obviously in the long term, that'll benefit you. Um, we don't want just more people applying, we want the right people applying. Um, but ultimately you want to hang on to these people and so the campaign will also support the retention of staff um, and you know, things like structured training, pay, progression and flexible hours are all key. Um, so it's really important to note that the change in perception behaviour takes time and that the aim of the campaign is to improve long-term recruitment. So we have a short-term win where we're getting people to look, um, 30,000 people, we hope more this time, to come and have a look at jobs. Um, in the sector, but also the long term um, keeping hold of those people and changing those perceptions. So we're launching the new campaign next week, um, but it will work from um, October through to the right to the end of the March 2024. And we feel that this always on approach will have a better impact um, and more longevity. So just to give you a little tiny overview of what you'll see and how you can get involved. Um, Phase two will start, as I say, this month. It'll run through January to March. It'll be aligned to hospitality rising to um, ensure the continuous presence in the market. We will have digital display, radio as before, um, digital radio, and a lot of um, partnerships as well. So you will be, you'll not be able to, to miss the activity over the next couple of months. Um, and also, we will be also having our microsite um, go live again, which is makeyourcareer.co.uk. We'll have lots of PR um, and a lot of support. Um, and also, we will be launching the new revised toolkit. You can see some of the PR here that work really well, where um, industry, and thank you for those who shared the stories, because people really wanted to learn about people and listen about people. And this got people thinking about how people had got into their careers and how sometimes the road into our industry is not just a straightforward one, which is always very, very interesting. So the focus um, on phase two will be um, obviously employers, yourselves. We've added in something new, which is the wellbeing promise. Um, and one of the key things as well that's come along and um, that you may have heard about um, already is there are now um, all age apprenticeships. So not, not only um, are you able to access an apprenticeship um, from a young person before, but you can approach for all age apprenticeships as well. Um, and we've got collaboration further with the college because they're all looking um, at these apprenticeships as, as well. So you can um, contact your local college to get involved. Um, I think that's a really, really good positive move, especially for career switchers um, to get involved. So. The key audiences have remained the same as the last time. So just to remind you, we had career switchers. So those are people who want to change. Maybe they're retired, they're looking for something else to do. And um, we've always got a need for part-time seasonal staff. And we're always looking for entry level. So those people are coming through schools and colleges. Um, so the barriers are still the same as the research. And um, we've got key messages are still the same. We're just um, ramping up some of the activity as well. 
So here you can see some of the imagery on the, the campaign. So this is for Career Switcher. Um, so we've lined up the actual target audience with the messaging to make it very, very clear. And obviously you can, you can use all of these in your own campaigns. Um, the website is there. Um, we've just updated it. Um, all of the information about the apprenticeships, the credit qualifications. Um, we've got a lot going on there on this website and also linking through to our own TNI.com as well, which is rich with resources. Um, so hopefully um, this will, will work as well or better than it did the last time. So ideally what happens is the job seeker um, clicks through to the site and it goes through to this partner site. Um, and obviously then all of these sites are rich with dedicated hospitality and tourism jobs. So they don't have to go fishing around. It should be really quick um, to access these jobs. And then they go through and apply as normal um, to the site. Um, so you can also upload your jobs to these sites um, and write on the back of the strength of the campaign. So this is just a reminder of the, the journey. So you can go through your phone, you can go on to um, your, your laptop computer and it'll get you very quickly to these sites and hopefully um, a land um, a person that you're looking for and the job seeker can land the job they're looking for very, very straightforwardly. So just to, to say about um, what's different this time um, around, as I said, we've adopted an always on approach. So the campaign is more longevity. Just to touch on the wellbeing promise. Um, so it was developed um, by UK Hospitality and Tourism Skills Board, um, and it is a UK wide initiative for the hospitality and tourism industry. So it's all about wellbeing and development of staff. So it's for you guys to involve yourselves with that, to show that you are looking to care about your staff, you want to retain your staff. So we just encourage you to sign up to that wellbeing and development promise. Um, and it's there, the website's wellbeingpromise.co.uk. We've refreshed the assets, which I'll just touch on now. And I think one of the key things that we've done this time is we've got better coordination between our partners. So we're thankfully working with um, Northern Ireland Tourism Alliance, um, Hospitality Ulster, the Hats Network. Um, we're working a lot with Springboard UK, Northern Ireland Hotel Federation, and we're working closely with the six colleges and many others. Um, so I just do think the size of the issue and skills is enormous and we do need to pull together. So just to touch in again on the resources, um, just to summarize um, before finish, so what you can do, you can actually download the assets um, on the campaign. So you can download these and use them in your own advertising. You can upload your own jobs then onto the vacancy sites. Um, you can utilize the make your career hashtag and use it in social media. Um, you can also look at all of our rich assets on TNI.com. So it's all about retention. There's a lot of there about recruitment and best practice. You can sign up for the wellbeing promise and also you can tell us any quirky stories that you have, any PR that you have um, in your own businesses. So there's a lot, um, whether you do all of these or one of these things, um, we would just encourage you to, to get involved. Um, all the assets, just touch on those, are, um, are downloadable. Um, so you can use those wherever you feel that you want to within your own campaign, um, whether it's online or printed material, whatever way you want to do it. You've got the wellbeing promise there once you sign up, get accessed and you're able to display all of these on all of your channels. Um, I'll not go into this, but there's probably more assets there. We'd like to think we've covered lots of different rules. There'll be rules in your business that we maybe haven't covered, um, but I think you can adapt a lot of this imagery um, and we know how expensive really good imagery is. So again, this is all shareable and downloadable. Um, we've got partnerships, as I say, with all of these um, organizations, which all have rich resources as well. So if you're already dealing with them, if you're members of these organizations, then you can access them from uh, the toolkit. And here are the access to all the colleges if you need to go and talk to them about what courses are available or how you access the apprenticeship courses as well. Um, just to finish off, we've got other activity going on. We were involved with the, the school summit. I think it's really important that we get our young people thinking about our career. We need to reach out and educate the parents on the opportunities in the, in the tourism and hospitality sector. And um, this is where we have been working with Springboard UK Charity. Um, we are continuing to work around regions to take the schools across Northern Ireland out for a nice day and educating them on all the opportunities and giving them a bit of fun as well. Um, 
The downside is that we have to track it all. It's the, the bit that we really need to do to make sure that this is working. So the research that we have is um, really good so far. So we're using some barometers. We've managed from the last campaign to move tourism up in perceptions by 2%. Hospitality is kind of stuck, but um, we're hoping we'll move these along by the activity. Um, and 60% consider that a sector would grow as a provider of permanent careers. That is a really strong indicator. So it's not just perceived as a job that you can do as a part-time, but there are careers. Um, and obviously we'll be doing more research through November and into March and we can update you as, as we go on that. So it's great to see that it's working. Um, just to finalise, there's contacts there. Um, we've got um, my team on industry development at tourismni.com, um, but we're not running away today. Um, really what we're saying is um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're looking forward to working with all of you to ensure that we attract the best people with the best fit to your business to allow you to grow and thrive into the future. And myself and the team are happy to take any questions you may have either now or you can reach us um, by a phone or email. Um, please review and download the toolkit, which will be circulated to all. I know there's been a lot to take in, um, so we're here to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, that was really, really informative and useful. Um, uh, many of you will know me, but I'm Tricia Kingston. I'm the Corporate Events Officer at Tourism NI. So shortly, I'm going to be um, chatting to Carolyn and um, asking her any questions that you might have um, based on that presentation we've just heard um, on this new phase of the Make It Here campaign. Um, so if there's anything at all that you'd like to ask or even just get a little bit of clarification on, um, just uh, feel free to pop that into the chat box now and I'll be picking up as many um, of your questions as possible today. Um, so as with all of our webinars, um, as usual, we'll be sharing a recording of today's session um, on our website afterwards as well. So you can find full details um, on the Make It Here campaign by visiting tourismni.com forward slash make it here. And that's where we'll, um, we'll include a little link to the recording of today as well afterwards. Um, so now it's my pleasure to welcome Carolyn back um, and we can go ahead and get stuck into some of your questions. So um, Carolyn, hi there. Thank you so much again. That was great. Um, uh, so. Um, I, I'll just get stuck in here. We have um, we have a question here um, for someone who says they they don't ha actually have any recruitment needs at the moment. Um, but is there any way that they can get involved? Yeah, well, lucky you that you don't have any recruitment needs. I know um, a lot of the larger players that are online today have maybe hundreds of vacancies. So brilliant that you don't. Um, but you really don't know what's around the corner. But in the interim. And what you can do is you can still sign up for the wellbeing promise online, as I said. Um, you can still use the hashtag on, on social media, which is hashtag make your career. Um, you, can, you can have a look at tni.com with all of the, there's health checks there because what I'm finding when I'm talking to people is they think they're doing everything, but when they just look at somebody else or, or they, they read something about maybe a health check, they find that there's one tiny little thing that they're maybe not doing. Um, and you could also really get still get involved in the PR stories. So um, if you're doing something really brilliant, which is a reason why you don't have any vacancies, you might want to share what you're doing or shine a light on somebody in your business that has um, you know, really gone the extra mile or they're big hearted, um, they're living the brand um, and they're worth um, you know, your time and effort. So you can um, shine a light on PR as them. Um, and yeah, just re recommend someone that's doing a great job or for, for yourself or maybe someone that you know in the industry that you'd like to give a pat on the back and we can pick up the story. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, and uh, we have another one here. Someone's wondering, um, is there any cost for getting involved in the campaign? Yeah, well, that's a good question. So all of our assets and the toolkits and everything are, are free um, online. Obviously, you need to remember that um, the recruitment sites um, that we are recommending um, all will have terms and conditions. They'll all have different um, rules that apply and they will be private sector companies. So most of them will charge placement fees, whether it's a temporary placement or a permanent placement. So you just really need to make sure that you're looking at their T's and C's. Um, on the PR side, I mean, I think that the biggest thing here is the assets um, are expensive. Um, to you, they're free and you can download them for free. Um, if you are obviously doing your own recruitment ads, then again, you're going to have to pay a bit for that. 
um, if you get involved in PR, it's again free, so you're getting that. If you also extend that PR and you want to do something yourself with the PR, obviously you'll, you'll need to pay for that. But all the media coverage that you get through the campaign via TNI will be will be free as well. So I think it's all great, great value. Okay, great. Um, sounds good. Um, okay, um, so this might be this might be a tricky one um, to answer because I don't know if it's necessarily a straight, straightforward um, uh, answer. But someone's wondering here, where is best for advertising jobs? Um, and also wondering uh, if if you can give any advice on how to make the job ads stand out. So anything, any wisdom there? <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's really complicated because there are so many recruitment sites and there's people. Because um, you're looking for different people in your business, it's probably better that you decide the channels that you use. Um, but the we we've selected seven partner sites there, um, and our own media partners um, have uh, recommended those sites because they have a really really good reach. So one thing I would say is that we have a lot of students that leave our shores and go you know go away, and then they tend to come back whether it's for the summer or or eventually they do. So. Some of the local sites are great, but if you want to look at reach, you'd probably be best looking at some of the more you know, bigger sites. Um, and the sites, I mean, our radio covered coverage will dip, um, you know, across the borders so that we're reaching people as far as wide as possible. So um, in terms of what you know gives standout, I just think, I suppose, I think the imagery that we have is worth downloading because I think it's great imagery. Um, if you have your own imagery, it's about maybe combining ours with your own brand, having to play around with the assets, see how it works. But something really clear, <clears throat> punchy, you know, exciting is what we're trying to do. And um, also just think about who you're trying to reach. So I mean, if you're if you're looking for students, you know, it's a very very different ad. They'll be looking on social. You have to know where they're going. If you're looking for a career switcher, that might be more traditional media. Um, so again, there's no easy answer. It is a tricky question, Patricia, but I think you just probably need to um, step back and have a think about what you're doing. Don't panic that you have a vacancy and start throwing things you know, around willy-nilly. Just take a bit of time and uh, get it right. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, everyone's uh, being quite kind to us today, so that's all the questions through um, for the moment. Um, last chance uh, last chance request if anybody wants to pop anything in there, but thank you so much um, for everyone that has contributed and, um, and everyone that's joined us here today. I hope you find it useful and I suppose just a reminder once again that the recording of this session will be online very soon um, and also um, will be available along with the toolkit um, uh, and other information about the campaign um, on tourismandi.com forward slash make it here and um, uh, you can see on the screen there how to get in touch with our team as well and um, if you do have any questions it's industry.development at tourismandi.com and also um, I have to get in a, a plug for for TED we've always got a TED activity coming up and um, at the moment we have registrations open for um, our second wave of TED experts uh, web webinars um, which this time will be looking at digital hot topics um, so that's at the start of December with Karen Connolly from Profile Tree we're going to be taking a look at um, how to embrace AI uh, for growth and efficiency um, and also looking at new digital marketing trends um, so that's the first couple of weeks in December their online webinar sessions as well so if you're interested in either of those um, or both of them, um, just head to tourismandi.com forward slash TED and you can find uh, full details on uh, what the sessions will cover and how to register and keep an eye there um, in the coming months because we've always got some more up our sleeves. So there'll be some other bits and pieces coming up uh, coming up soon. Um, so uh, just had one more look, Carolyn. Everyone's been very kind to us. No more questions there uh, today. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Carolyn, uh, for a really useful and informative session. Um, Thanks to Barry um, behind the scenes and uh, keeping everything running smoothly for us. Um, and also thanks to everyone that's joined us here today. Hope I will see you soon at some of our TED uh, opportunities. Um, okay, thanks so much. Cheerio, have a good afternoon, everyone.